Hello, David here with Stupid Things People Do and what we can learn from them. I'm going to be launching a series of advice about investigations. But before I do that, I want to revisit some of our original vlogs and redo them in slightly higher quality since they're going to tie in with that coming series. Today, I'm going to be revisiting our first vlog, The Rosebud Restaurant in Chicago. As a reminder, this isn't news and it isn't legal advice. It's a vlog based on information as has been reported in legal proceedings. So, with that out of the way, say Susan is being harassed by someone. Don't fire Susan for being harassed. I know, right? It's like putting warning don't lick notices on a spark plug. Seriously, who does that? Well, the fact that I'm making a disclaimer means somebody has tried. And who was this noteworthy individual, you might ask? Well, it's not precisely an individual, it is a now closed Rosebud restaurant in Chicago. At this restaurant, a woman, who we will call Susan for the sake of her anonymity, was being sexually harassed by another server in 2013. And this wasn't a small deal, this wasn't ambiguous. This was like the harasser was trying to win at sexual harassment, bingo. So we're talking sexual comments, propositions, unwanted touching, inappropriate touching, as I said, was not ambiguous, and it wasn't happening in secret. You see, Susan complained to her managers, and after complaining on a second occasion about other employees referring to African Americans in racially derogatory terms, Susan was fired. Unsurprisingly, there was a lawsuit. See, the trick with fostering sexual harassing and dubiously racist work environments is that the sort of offenders who do that sort of thing tend to be repeat offenders. During litigation, the EEOC discovered even more complaints from other women who had been harassed at the same location by that same person. So, here's the twist. Remember that bit about fostering dubiously racist working environments that I mentioned like 30 seconds ago? Well, it turns out it was not so dubious. You see, Rosebud had previous lawsuits filed against them for refusing to hire African American applicants because of those applicants' race. So Rosebud had created a racist working environment. They exposed their employees to some pretty unambiguous sexual harassment, and then they kept doing both of those things, repeatedly. Unsurprisingly, Rosebud lost those lawsuits to the tune of $160,000 relief to the harassed women in 2018, and that on top of the $1.9 million they had to provide in 2017 because of their racism. So what can we learn from this aside from the obvious seriously don't be racist and don't harass people? Failing to act on a sexual harassment complaint doesn't just put one person in danger of being harassed. It can affect everybody. See, the thing is this. Harassers tend to be repeat offenders, and communicating to a harasser that they can get away with behavior, well, that can create escalation because it can expose multiple people to harassment as the harasser is emboldened. It also can increase the severity of the harassment because the harasser may not only feel emboldened to harass more people, but they may feel that they can get away with more and may harass more severely. As such, Taking steps to prevent harassment is critical. Specific to this situation, obviously it's best not to fire people for claiming they are being sexually harassed or for claiming there's racism. Even if you look into the allegations and it turns out the employee is not really being harassed, if this kind of thing gets out, it can be a really bad look from a PR perspective, regardless of whether or not it's actually true. And of course, from a moral perspective, you definitely should not take the chance of firing someone who is legitimately being harassed. And from a legal perspective, you absolutely cannot fire someone for making a good faith report of harassment, even if you find out it's not true. The point is, whether there's harassment or rumors of harassment, if that kind of thing is happening at your organization and you don't look into it, there's going to be consequences. Of course, you want to stay on the right side of the law you want to value human dignity, you want to value individual dignity, and you don't want to tolerate degrading behavior. But there's another side of this, which is if there's allegations, you need to investigate. And that's what we're going to be deep diving to in the next weeks. What do investigations look like? When do you need to do them? It's going to be a great trip. I'll talk to you then.